on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Arby's. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Red Wings Live. I'm Trevor Thompson, and Chris Osgood along with me at your service tonight. It's not quite the same rivalry that it was when this guy was wearing the winged wheel, but it's a big hockey game between two teams who are playing some pretty darn good hockey of late. Oz, the Wings have won seven of their last eight. The Avs desperately pushing for a wild card spot in the West. They've gone 12, 5, and 3 in their last 20 games after a dreadful start. What's the key for the Wings tonight, cooling off this hot Avs team? Uh, well, the Avalanche have struggled in the power play mightily of late. Once again, for the Red Wings, like, special teams are going to be very, very important. They've been good. they got to get better on the penalty kill, obviously, with that opportunity tonight against that Avalanche team where their power play hasn't been very good. And the Wings need their power play to continue to be good as well. they got to really go after the Avalanche's defense. They're missing some key parts back there, one of them being Barry. He's out of the lineup. He was a late scratch with an injury to his hip. So the Red Wings are going to have to play tight against their D, four check hard, and make sure their special teams are good as usual, improve on the penalty kill. So those are just a few things to watch out for as this game rolls on tonight from Denver. And one of the keys for the Wings this season has been their strong play on the road. That will need to continue through the rest of the month of February because the road is where they'll be. With more on a club getting zero love from the schedule maker, let's join John Keating now who's in Denver. Keats, it's all yours. Well, Trev, it's like howling at the moon or barking at somebody on Twitter. It's really not going to do you any good. And it's not that the NHL schedule maker is evil. He or she is just weird. Wings go through stretches in which they'll play three of three games in four nights, and then they seem to be forgotten on the NHL schedule for a little bit. They'll play for the first time in five nights tonight, and that's just having had the All-Star break. We gave him two days off, and uh, I mean, we had a workout, but we gave him two days off the ice. We thought it was important. It's, it's always a long grind, and so when you can freshen up, you can. Uh, you know, ideally, we've had good practices, and we'll be ready to play tonight. We have to be to play a good team, and they're desperate. I think they're four points out right now. They're desperate, so, uh, you know, the bottom line is we got to be ready to go. The start of the game, I would guess, could speed up on you if you haven't played for four or five days. Absolutely, right? and especially over here, they're a really fast, fast team, and uh, and with the high altitude, I think they got a little. Uh, this, uh, we got a little disadvantage of them, so uh, we'll see. But uh, we're gonna try our best here. Jonathan Erickson and the Wings 4-0-2 in their last six meetings against the Avalanche, and that thing about not complaining about the schedule going forward. Yeah, it's true. With ear flaps, nine of the next 11 for the Red Wings are on the NHL road, Trev. And John Keating will be there for the next two of them, and we'll hear more from him as this show rolls on. And while the Avs have been stockpiling some top-notch talent, thanks to some pretty impressive draft picks over the last few years, Oz, it's the old heads who've been leading the way for them. Guys, you're very familiar with. Uh, once again, last year, the young guys really carried this team this year. Joel McGinley. And Alex Tange have been super for the Avalanche. They had a horrendous start this year. And these two guys, the veteran leadership that they provided for the Avalanche has been bar none very, very good. Again, leading the team with 16 goals. He's a slow starter usually every, every year of his career. Once again, showing that he is a star in this league, still even at his age. And Tange has been in Colorado, it seems like, forever. Second, uh, first in scoring in the Colorado Avalanche, again, the most goals in the Avalanche team. These two have led them back into contention for a playoff spot. How much of an impact can they have on a game like tonight's where there be a lot of speed involved? Uh, I think they can. These guys don't need to be fast to be effective. They're very, very good at finding the openings, finding their way around the ice. Jerome McGinley, we all know in the power play, is very, very good. He has one of the best shots in the league still, and he seems to always play well against Red Wings, so they have to be aware of him on the penalty kill where he is at all times. All right, good stuff, Oz, but maybe it'll be one of the Red Wing veterans who notches a hat trick tonight, and that'd be good for you because if a Detroit player scores a hat trick in this game, you can bring a copy of the scoring summary to a participating Arby's location for a free small order of curly fries. You can find the scoring summary in your newspaper or on the Red Wings page at FoxSportsDetroit.com. Coming up next, the rumors of the Avalanche demise in this year's playoff race have been greatly exaggerated. They've got a pulse, and they're not going down without a fight. More on that as Red Wings Live rolls on after this. Our Xfinity look around the league shows us where the Wings are in the Eastern Conference standings heading into tonight's game. Both the Wings and the Canadiens are sitting with 67 points, but the Lightning lead the East with 69. 
And while two more points for the Red Wings would be good tonight, and it would certainly help their cause in the standings, their opponent, the Colorado Avalanche, need those two points way more than the Wings tonight. And not that talking ever won anybody anything, but there may be a little extra chirping on the ice for one target in particular this evening. With more on that, let's rejoin John Keating back in the Mile High City. Keats? Well, Trev, including the playoffs, Brad Stewart has more than a 1,000 NHL games played in his career. Almost a third of those was as a member of the Red Wings. For the seventh time since he left Detroit, he'll go up against some of his longtime friends this evening. And being hard of hearing might help a little bit because he knows he'll hear it loud and long from some of his former teammates here tonight. A couple probably. Hank's always got something, uh, you know, some smart remark he'll probably give me out there, but, uh, you know, it's always good to see those guys. We'll go back a little bit. He spent a lot of time when he played here in Detroit, so it's uh, it's fun to play against him, but, you know, he's a tough player. He's really strong, and you got to keep your head up. Is it all clean? Is it all above board when you have these conversations? <sighs> Most of the time. <laughs> there you go, most of them. You know Stewart's story. He left Detroit for family reasons, went to California to be near his kids. Some of those legal entanglements were resolved. He found his way here to Colorado. And you know the old axiom about he who laughs last? Stewart, in the six games that he has played against Detroit since he left Detroit, is 5-0-1. He'll be getting an earful on the ice here at the Pepsi Center tonight, team. All right, good stuff, Keats. Oz, the Avs are coming off a season in which they made the playoffs under a first-year head coach who just happened to be the coach of the year, and Patrick Waugh. Now they look like a completely different team this year. What gives? A tough start. Last year, they were off to an outstanding start. Very, very good. To me, Patrick Waugh, first-year coach in the National Hockey League last year, was a lot easier year for him. They got off to a great start. They're in more or less come January. This year has been the exact opposite. They struggled mightily early, lost a ton of games. Their goaltender really struggled. Patrick Waugh had to coach more than he had to last year. He's done a great job to keep his team on track. And if anything, I'd say he did, does the best as he keeps his team even keel and he's kept them confident throughout their losing ways. And now they're in a position to give himself an opportunity to make the playoffs here. They're making a big push, but that takes a lot out of guys night after night. How much would they have left in the tank if they are able to get over that hump and get that wild card We spot? just talked about Tange and the Ginla, but they do have a lot of young players that really haven't performed like they did their first year. So look for the guys like McKinnon, Landis Scott. These guys are very good players that could come on here in the last 30 games of the year and really give them the push necessary. Tyson on defense is very good. They're missing Johnson on defense, but the main reason why they're back in it is Varlamov has re redeemed himself and played the way he did last season. And watch for this guy tonight. They're missing some demon, but this guy's capable of stealing games. Red Wings got to play him tough tonight. All right. Well, these two teams certainly have a lot of history between them, as this guy can attest to personally. And they'll write another chapter in their history book in little over a year from now, a little under a year from now, I guess, we'll be with another outdoor game. That's right. The Wings and the Avs will face off on February 27th, so that is over a year from now, at Coors Field. And it's today's Business of Hockey brought to you by Walsh College. It'll be the 18th official NHL game played in the elements and the third by your Detroit Red Wings. Up next on Red Wings Live, Pavel Datsuk continues to amaze wing fans with his magic act on the ice. We'll explore another one of his talents on Red Wings Live right after this. Red Wings Live is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by Motor City Casino Hotel, a million miles away, right down the street. Unfortunately, some bad news for Tiger fans today. It was announced that Victor Martinez tore the meniscus in his knee during an off-season workout and is expected to undergo surgery on Tuesday. It's not yet known how much time V-Mart will miss, but the Tigers are expecting further updates after his surgery takes place next week. Bad news, but as we turn our focus back to hockey, Pavel Datsuk has every skill a hockey player could ask for. He's so good, sometimes all those skills seem to be on display at once. But tonight, we'll focus on just one, agility. When Pavel Datsuk darts in and out of tight spots along the boards or in between defensemen, you'd think he's one of the smallest players in the league. Yet number 13 stands over six feet tall on skates. 
and weighs nearly 200 pounds. So why does everyone think Datsuk's so small? Agility. In a 2012 player's poll, Datsuk was voted most difficult to stop. And it's easy to see why. That's it, Datsuk. Moving right in. Oh, Scores! my gosh. Woo! Elbow Datsuk oh with five God. seconds left. Whether it's going end to end or in the most congested corners, Pavel finds his way to shrink himself and get to open ice. In one way or another, that means putting the puck to the net. And Datsuk, what a move! Right in, oh. scores! Wow. Oh, a Datsuki and Deke, that's a beauty! Oh, boy. Agility dashes its way onto the list of the Magic Man's 13 most magical qualities. And stay tuned to Red Wings Live following the game when we select our Fox Sports Detroit Red Wings player of the game presented by the single, double, and triple cheeseburgers from McDonald's. That suit would be a good bet heading into the game tonight, that's for sure. Coming up next, the Wings have some very special guests on this trip. It's the annual Dad's Trip. We're going to have a whole lot more on that when Red Wings Live rolls on after you watch this. Monday night, the Red Wings hosted their 15th annual Toast of Hockey Town event at Joe Louis Arena. Fans had a chance to mingle with their favorite Red Wing player, sample over 70 different types of wine, and raise money for the Detroit Red Wings Foundation. Nearly $200,000 was raised, I'm happy to report, and a good time was certainly had by all. And let's face it, everyone wants the approval of dear old dad, especially when dad is right there watching you perform in person. Such is the case tonight when the Wings play the Avs with their dads in the house for the first of two games on the annual dad's trip. John Keating is on the trip as well and has the inside scoop on what's going on with the fathers and sons. Keats. Trev, this is fascinating. Drew Miller's dad, Dean, had to stop and count. This will be his sixth Red Wings dad's trip, and this one will blend right into the next one because once the Wings get home from Phoenix, Dean Miller will have exactly one day off before his next dad's trip. His son Ryan, of course, plays for the Vancouver Canucks, and he'll be on that trip as they go to those tropical hotspots, St. Paul and Chicago. Lots of smiles, though, in the Red Wings dressing room and here at the rink. And Danny DeKaiser and his dad, Mick, couldn't wait to do this again. It's very extremely interesting. Last year was my first dad's trip, and I couldn't wait to come back to this one. When you have your dad along, how much does it change your routine? <laughs> Not much. I don't think it should, right? Um, no, I just do all the same things, and uh, he just he just enjoys tagging along with us. Is your anxiety level any different because the guy who is your biggest fan is watching her every move? <laughs> no, um, you know I lived with him and played hockey in front of him for you know 18, 20 years, whatever. So um, I got used to that pretty quick, and uh, just used to having him around all the time. Lots of people who are watching this, Mick would like to know what it's like to be a hockey parent who sees his kid make it to the NHL. If you have advice for a hockey dad out there, what might it be? Well, uh, first of all, it's awesome to begin with. Uh, uh, my advice would be just to, uh, to try to get him to where he needs to be, and then the rest is up to him. Well, these trips are a little bit of work for some of the dads. Three of them had to come all the way from Sweden. Young Xavier Willett won't play tonight. He's been recalled, but he was told last week to go ahead and invite his dad. And his father, Robert, played professionally in France and in Germany. And tonight, and on this trip, he'll get a chance as to how the Red Wings treat family. Trent? All right, good stuff, Keats. Now, the guy to my left has had some experience on a few of these trips. But, Ozzy, beyond the fun for everybody, how important is this for the guys this time of year and this trip in particular? It, it doesn't really get any better than that. It, it, it's awesome. These guys remember their fathers driving them to the rinks early in the mornings to these cold arenas while they played growing up as young kids. And really, their support, their fathers were always there every single game helping them along, telling them their do's and the don'ts, obviously, and when they made a mistake, correcting them right away. So this is kind of giving back to them, inviting them on a trip. Now they're in the NHL, and you can see Danny Kaiser's dad, who is at every home game, doesn't miss a game. <laughs> How excited. He certainly gets a lot of camera time. Great guy. You can see he's just beaming with his son on the Red Wings. Certainly is, and hopefully they'll get a win for their dads tonight in 
uh, Denver <laughs> facing the Avalanche. <laughs> now we're fast approaching one of my favorite times of the hockey season. And the wisest thing the Red Wings could do with this month leading up to the March 2nd trade deadline is play Let's Make a Deal with their head coach. Keith Gaves has more on that if you tune in to FoxSportsDetroit.com and read his column online. Up next, Gustav Nyquist had a breakout season last year, and he's still contributing in a big way this season. We'll tell you how he's getting it done next on Red Wings Live. Red Wings Live is brought to you by Flagstar Bank, a proud and official partner of the Detroit Red Wings. And by your Detroit area Honda dealers. Visit your Detroit area Honda dealers today. Go to DetroitHondaDealers.com. These two teams last met a few days before Christmas, and the game went to a shootout, deep into a shootout. Gustav Nyquist and Thomas Tatar both scored for the Wings. But it would take a total of nine shooters to decide this one. Jerome McGinley rounded out the scoring in the ninth round to put the Avs up. Brendan Smith was not able to convert, so the Avs went home with the extra point that evening. Welcome back inside the studio. Trevor Thompson and Chris Osgood leading you up to the wings and the Avs at the top of the hour. And Ozzy, Gustav Nyquist wowed the fans last year with some highlight reel goals. And while his goals haven't been as flashy this year, he's still putting up big numbers. Eight points in his last six games, not as flashy, but just as effective. You no, know, he's been very, very effective this year. He's durable, and everybody questioned that. He's not the biggest of guys. They said he was a little slight. Well, he's played all 50 games this year, and he's played very, very well. 38 points in all of 50 games, like I mentioned, for Gustav Nyquist, and he's been very good. His intelligence on the ice is very, very good. He's a very sh good shot. His skill set is what sets him apart from a lot of guys in this league, and really, his intelligence, like I said, that goes along with his skill set, make him a very, very effective player on the ice. And to me, he's part of that Fab Four. Michigan had the Fab Four, but now the Red Wings have the Fab Four. Tatar, Nyquist, Zetterberg, and Datsuk, and this guy is part of that. He's been very, very good this year. And he's one of the reasons why the power play has been so good. And I'm just impressed with his consistency. No, he hasn't had as many great flashy goals as he had last year, but he's been consistently good on a night in and night out basis. And that's part of him rounding into a complete player. He's been asked to play more defense and be more responsible on his own end. And he's done that well. Not giving up anything on the offensive end. Very impressive this season. We see those 12 goals on the power play, third best in the entire NHL. Why is he so effective in those well, situations? He, he's smart. He can find the soft areas. He can find the open areas where he gets himself open. He's playing with some great players, but he knows how to use the Pavel Datsuks and the Hedrick Zetterbergs to his advantage where some other guys don't. And that's where his intelligence takes over. And then after he gets the puck, he knows how to put it in the net. And maybe he'll do that tonight as the Red Wings take on the Avs. Nyquist has two, he sits two goals behind Thomas Tatar for the team lead as the Wings face off against the ads in the Mile High City. It's coming up next here on Fox Sports Detroit. Ken Daniels and Darren Elliott are on the call tonight. Should be a great game between a pair of hot teams. Enjoy it, everybody.